Welcome back. We're talking about Turkey's national security after bomb blasts hit the capital this weekend, killing nearly 100 people. The government was quick to condemn the attack, but not as quick to name its source. It may have been ISIL or the Kurdish Workers' Party, a group classified by the government as terrorists. So what is ahead for Turkey? Still with me to discuss this from Ankara Bilal Sambur is a political analyst and professor at Turkey's Yildirim Bayazet University. With me on set, Joshua Walker is a non-resident transatlantic fellow at the German Marshall Fund focusing on foreign policy and foreign affairs. And from Ankara, Tulin Dalolo is a Turkish journalist and opinion writer. Thanks to all of you again. Bilal, let me start with you again. Turkey has, up to now, uh, taken a pretty lax attitude on ISIL, hasn't it? It's allowed recruits, for instance, to pass through its territory, territory to cross the border into Syria. Do you think that is now going to change? I think, uh, yes, of course, as you said, for a long time, Turkey has been criticized because of uh, her attitude or, let's say, flexible attitude toward ISIL. Many people uh, uh, express this accusation or blame against Turkey. But now, especially uh, after uh, ISIL attacks uh, uh, against Turkish soldiers in the border of Syria, Turkish attitude uh, radically changed. Now Turkey uh, definitely classify ISIL and PKK together as a common enemy of Turkey. Now I think especially after uh, Saturday massacre, Turkey is going to show uh, much radical attitude against uh, ISIL and probably uh, Turkey will participate in international co uh, coalition more effectively. We could say that now. Joshua, what about the PKK? That's the main Kurdish rebel group. There's been a truce between the PKK and the Turkish government. Uh, what's happened? Is it still holding? What's interesting about it is right after this attack, the PKK actually announced another ceasefire. And right. so what's interesting here is that we don't know if we're talking about one PKK anymore. Historically, uh, the civil war that's raged between the PKK and the Turkish state led to over 30,000 deaths. It is undoubtedly a terrorist organization uh, that the Americans, the Europeans, and the Turks have been working closely together to confront in many different ways. This time around, it seems to be different because the PKK has elements that are in Iraq, they have elements that are in Syria, and in many ways, because of the, the Syrian civil war, the most effective boots on the ground that have been fighting ISIL from the very beginning and also most directly last year after Kobani has been forces that have been somehow aligned with the PKK. It may not be direct PKK, but their Syrian offshoots and their uh, kind of brethren in both Iraq and in Turkey have been working closely. And the question has been, what does America, what do other international actors do if they're trying to find some boots on the ground to fight ISIL? And this has put the Turkish state directly in, in, in conflict in some ways and something that now is coming home to roost with this most recent terrorist attack. Tulin, when we look at these alarming developments in Turkey, how is it being seen in the region? Uh, stability in Turkey, I mean, is it under threat in any way? And of course, we shouldn't forget that Turkey is also a member of NATO. True, Turkey is a member of NATO, and it's, uh, so that means that it carries even more responsibility in terms of uh, approaching to the Syrian issue, to the Iraqi issue, and, you know, name whatever. This region has always been a very problematic one, but Turkey is no stranger to it because it's, it's geography. Um, but uh, the Turkish government's policy towards Syria, and especially its lax border policy, has been a problem. Uh, on July 22, Turkey agreed to uh, ally with the United States in the fight against the ISIL. And so for the first time, it allowed the Injerlik Air Base, along with the Diyarbakir and Batman military air bases, to be used against uh, ISIL, you know, uh, targets, uh, and that they will carry both military, uh, you know, uh, air attacks, both as the, you know, Turkish and the American uh, air uh, forces. And, you know, there there is some, you know, cooperation, but but when you look at the, you know, uh, uh, the rhetoric that's coming out of Washington, there is still some question mark as to whether Turkey is really cooperating with the United States and fight against ISIL. Uh, Secretary of Defense Ash Carter said that Turkey can do more, and that, you know, sentence, 
you know, embed so many things within it. So we are going to see how Turkey is going to take these two attacks, both in Suruç and in Ankara. That is most likely looking at the state official statements today that's been carried out by the ISIL members, how they are going to take it seriously and how they are going to approach it in the coming days. If they are going to politicize it and, you know, put the blame on the Kurdish side and uh, accuse the pro-Kurdish People's Democratic Party as being an offshoot of the PKK terrorist organization and continue to make the Kurdish people of this country even more uncomfortable uh, as they are, whether they fit into the society or not, it's just, you know, going to um, create more troubles. I mean, this is not an easy path right now, but it is definitely the making of the AKP ruling justice and development party. So we will see how it's going to be. But looking at it from Ankara, this huge funeral house here today, nothing seems really very hopeful. We are so divided and our politicians are still so unable to get together to find a common rhetoric on our morning days and uh, to heal the nation, to comfort the nation. It's just plain sad here. Bilal, uh, listening to what Tulin just said there, that uh, it, the picture looks very pessimistic. There's not much hope in Turkey right now. We have an election coming up on November 1st. That's just a few weeks away. How is this latest spate of violence going to play out in that election? I think it is a very important uh, question. Now in Turkey, actually now uh, basically people try to read or understand uh, the recent uh, Saturday attack uh, considering uh, first November election. I mean, every evaluation one way or another take uh, no, uh, first November election as a criteria. Some people say that, for example, this attack uh, will, uh, will contribute uh, the rise of vote of AKP, or some people say that uh, pro-Kurdish party, HDP, uh, is uh, getting more political gain from this attack. There are many controversial and uh, conflictual evaluation about that, but uh, all these evaluations show that Turkish society, not only in social level, at the same time, in the mind, uh, there is a split uh, of mind in Turkish society. Probably we could say that uh, this, the manifestation of uh, the, this, this split uh, could cause uh, more violence and conflict uh, for coming days. Uh, I am not going to be surprised if a similar attack or more clash uh, occur between uh, government, uh, uh, between Turkish army, Turkish security forces and PKK or with ISIL militant. Probably in the coming days uh, could carry more uh, violent incidents. Joshua, what do you think? Will the uh, outcome of this election resolve anything? I think what's going to be interesting is it's the only thing we can hope for. There right. has to be a political compromise. And don't forget, right after the elections comes the G20 summit, where all world leaders are going to be coming to Turkey in the midst of this horrible security situation. Turkey cannot do this alone. It has to have international support. But to your immediate question, I think this election will set up a series of questions moving forward. I don't think that whatever government comes out of the November 1st uh, election will be the final answer, but it will be the beginning in that process. So if there's elections soon afterwards, I think that begins to build the process because while we're very pessimistic in the short term, in the long run, I, re I remain stubbornly optimistic about this country and its people because when you see the HDP, the pro-Kurdish party, what it is doing is transforming fundamentally the question and what we saw early on of the ruling Justice Development Party was very similar in terms of reform. So there are elements within uh, the Turkish state and the nation that can look forward, but they need international support at this moment in time. Tillin, uh, looking ahead, and we look at Turkish leaders, you know, we look at Prime Minister... Ahmed Davutoglu, we look at President Erdogan. Are they the people that are going to lead Turkey out of this crisis? Can they unite Turkey? 
Well, on June 7, Turkish people said that enough of this polarizing rhetoric that's been, uh, you know, the result of the Erdogan and Davutoglu's team as to how they govern this country for the past 13 years, mainly uh, now the Turkish president Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Uh, and the people said that the best way for us now is to have a coalition government. If you cannot pull yourselves together and uh, find a way to cooperate together and produce something good for the people, for all of us, then and let's have a coalition government. Basically, Erdogan did not want this coalition government to happen. It didn't happen. Turkey is now going to repeat its June 7 elections on November 1. There is nothing as a fact that suggests that AKP, the ruling Justice and Development Party, will pull through this as a single party government. It doesn't seem that they are going to win this election. So there will be again another coalition government. What is it? How is it going to be different? We really do not know. But, but as a fact, since June 7 general election, almost 700 people, exactly 694 people have died because of this unbelievable and unprecedented political mass in this country. And somebody has to uh, be held responsible of this. And if it's not the government, who it is, we really do not know. And the answer, not knowing how the path is going to, uh, you know, uh, come forward, it's it's really very discomforting. It doesn't make anyone feel safe in this country any longer. The Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan today said, anyone who criticizes him, anyone who held holds uh, the AKP responsible of the Ankara attack of October 10 uh, is affiliated as, uh, you know, as being a member of a terrorist organization. Again, this rhetoric was not helpful. Uh, there should be freedom of expression, freedom of ideas, freedom of the media, but that space, that space of freedom and, you know, fresh air is getting, is getting tightened every single day, and we are also losing our lives loved ones in this uh, ju just, you know, sad political mass in this country. And that's where we have to leave it. Thanks to all of you for joining us.